Good, good evening, Mrs. Kaplan. I just spoke with um, Ms. M Mrs. Monahan, another Radnor parent. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is recorded, so it will be uploaded to our webpage under student services. So we thank you for joining us tonight. Um, this is an overview of our gifted programming and process. I have on the on the Zoom tonight, Miss Miss Jennifer Howie. Jen Jennifer, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, good evening. My name is Jennifer Howie. And I am the gifted support teacher at Radnor High School. Um, this is my second year at Radnor, but not certainly not my second year in gifted education. I spent um, over 20 years in the Chamonix School District, and the last 10 of those years was in gifted education. And i um, glad to be at Radnor. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Okay. And we've missed Jackie Ortner. She is what, a, a new to our middle school this year. We are thrilled to have her. Um, she's been in education for a while. So Jackie, why don't you introduce yourself? Good evening, everyone. I'm Jackie Ortner. And like Kara did say, I am a new gifted support teacher at the middle school. In addition to doing gifted, I'm also doing some special ed teaching as well in some different capacities. So I have a a lot of different things going on and I'm very excited to be at Radnor and just like Jen said you know I'm always here as a support if you need anything feel free to shoot me an email okay and just so for the sake of time tonight um, we are not taking any questions and answers after the presentation if you have specific questions I encourage you to reach out to your child's teacher you can re reach out to me um, as well my email um, address is on the website as well so let, let me get started and we're going to be going through um, our programming here at Radnor. This will go. Okay, so as we start off, chapter 16, I'm going to move this here so I can see everybody. Chapter 16 is the um, the guidelines that we have to follow um, as, a, as a public school. So chapter 16 are the guidelines that refer to gifted education. If you're familiar with any of the chapters um, that are that are in our, our law regarding education, chapter 14 deals with our special design instruction, our students with IEPs that require um specific services to ac access their general education classes. Chapter 16 is our gifted, which I'll review some of the components. And chapter 15 um, deals with our students that require 504. So students that need accommodations to access their education. So chapter 16, the way it's written is that we are legally um, need to provide supports for students when they qualify for gifted services. And we're gonna be talking about that th throughout the night what it, what this process is, what that looks like, and how we program. So we are um, mandated to provide services and programs. We need to develop and identify um, what that specific, specific child needs. We also need to make this programming based on their unique needs. And um, we look at the whole child, we look at their strengths, we look at their at their um, their overall ability to be able to program for them. And we want them to be able to participate in acceleration or enrichment programs, which you'll hear more tonight. So there's a lot more to chapter 16, but these are just some, just some guidelines that help us um, and guide us and how we develop our programming here in Radnor. Um, we also take into consideration these guidelines when we're um, selecting curriculums. Um, currently our district is looking at the K to eight math program. So our gifted teachers have been part of that process to make sure that there are enrichment activities and programs within our curriculum. In the next few years, we'll be looking at our English language. So every every so often we, we, we evaluate that. So this is just an overview of our gifted guidelines that we need to follow. Some of the characteristics of a gifted learners. A um, few years ago, um, we did do a presentation on gifted um, services and programmings in Radnor. And, and I kept this quote from our last presentation. It says, what makes a child gifted and talented may not always be good grades in school, but a different way of looking at the world and learning. And that just that just really speaks to me. Before I became an administrator, I was a teacher for 18 years. And you know, when when you're teaching a child, you're looking at at their learning styles. They're looking at the way they embrace education, the way they communicate, the way they collaborate. And some of our our gifted learners just bring so much enrichment to to our classrooms. That's that's a gift. It's a gift for all of our students and our teachers. So some of the characteristics are that they learn at a faster rate than other students. They, I'm going to let a parent in here real quick. They, um, the students create. Um, 
crave, crave depth in their academic areas of interest. Um, often we will see students that really um, you know, have an interest in, in math and science. And we know that we know those kids. We, we may have some of our own children that just crave that. They're, they're reading constantly. They're looking on the YouTube videos. They just like to have that depth of that interest area. And that's where we as a school, when, when we have a child gifted, we need to provide those, those um, high level interest activities for them. Our gifted students like to be challenged and stimulated. Um, they like to be interacting with, with their teachers and with their peers at that level. And the students' um, needs need to be met through acceleration and specialized instruction, just like I just reviewed in, in our chapter 16 guidelines. That's, that's what they need to do and that's their profile. So one of the slides, this is, this is a very brief overall overview of MTSS, our multi-tiered system of support. And when I was creating this presentation, I started writing all this information about MTSS and I, I had to stop myself because that's a whole nother, whole nother level of support that we have in our school district. But I wanted to touch, touch on this because it is a critical role and point um, when we are looking at students um, that could be could be potentially gifted, and we, when we are suspecting that that a student is in need of gifted education, so we have school based teams. We were in year two of MTSS, which stands for multi tiered system of support. Um, in in our education world, there's a lot of acronyms, so um, I might be to make sure I'm reading them out um, correctly. But we have this system of support that allows our school-based teams to work, to collaborate and analyze academic and behavioral data. And we're in year two, our elementary program is in it. Um, every eight weeks, our MTS teams, MTSS teams meet and evaluate that data. They look at the whole child, they look at the enrichment activities, um, they look at the curriculum to see how they can differentiate it. They look at the levels of the grouping. Um, and currently right now, our teacher of gifted, we have a gifted teacher in every single elementary building at Wayne, Ethan, and Radnor Elementary. And she is pushing in and pulling into those MTSS groups and assessing students' needs, seeing who, would, who needs the enrichment um, and giving them access to that curriculum. So this is a very important part of of, of programming for all of our students, but especially when we are looking and identifying students that could that would need to go through the evaluation process to be gifted. So once once we start to, you know, we have teachers that have the option to start screening and looking at the evaluation process, but you as a parent also may request a gifted evaluation. You know, we, the, the saying is you do know your child best. And, and I always encourage my teachers to really make sure that our parents are wholeheartedly involved. Your input, your value of how you know your child is, is critical to, to help us as educators. So at any time you can request a gifted evaluation. Um, once you um, make that request with your teacher, it could be um, in written form, it could be um, verbally in a meeting, conferences I know are, are coming up. This is why we, we decided to do this presentation to prepare for conferences so that people are aware. But we do have 10 days to consider that request and respond to you. That then um, prompts our classroom teachers, our MTSS groups, our principal, and all of us to come together um, to see if we need to start that process. Any child that will be identified as gifted must have the full scale of 130 or higher. Um, there is other criteria that we're, gonna, we're going to talk about tonight. Once you make that request and the team comes together, we notify the parent and start the process to, um, if, to see if we need to move to a permission to evaluate. So the next couple slides you will actually find on our website. If you go to rtsd.org and go and select departments and go to student services, we actually have a gifted section. We have these different phases on our website. Um, the reason why I'm addressing it tonight is because we found that we had some parents that often had, had questions and needed more clarification of how we look at eligibility for, for gifted services. So if you, we, we look two times throughout the school year, we look at the student data. And again, circling back to our MTSS slide, this is, this is a critical part because we're, we are always evaluating our data. So for grades one, two, and three, as you see, part A, we look at our reading scores and we look at our STAR. STAR is an assessment that we give our students. 
I thought somebody said something. STAR is the assessment that we give our students throughout the school year to assess their reading, um, their decoding, their fluency, their comprehension. And we want to be able to see if a child can re reach 95th percentile or greater. That's one of our phases of our eligibility. We also look at our FMP score. FMP, you may hear that at your conferences, is the Fontes and Pennell reading assessment. Again, it's looking at how the students are reading independently. One of the criteria is that if your student is reading one and a half or more grade levels above where they are, that is consideration. So if you have a student right now in fourth grade and independently they're reading above a fifth grade level, so fifth grade, fifth month into fifth grade or higher, that is one of the eligibility criteria that we look at. In terms of math, again, we look at our STAR scores. Math and focus is the current curriculum that we have. Made another parent here. And we are looking at 95% or greater on the curriculum based tests that are given. When we get to grades four and five, we continue, we continue to look at the STAR assessments, the Fontes and Pinnell. But now we have another data point, which is the PSS. <laughs> Students in Pennsylvania start to take the PSSA exams in third grade. So if they score advanced, that we make that another um, eligibility um, point for, for testing. I'm going to go to the next slide because this continues. This phase one is, is pretty it's important. Okay, phase one is continued here. So after we look at the, the STAR scores, the Fontes and Pinnell scores, the PSSAs, if it's applicable for that grade level, we then decide if the student would need the COGAT screener. The COGAT is a multiple choice test that analyzes the student's cognitive ability. This is not the same test that will give you the full scale IQ that we're looking at at, at 130 or above. When the student takes the COGAT screener, it takes about a half an hour. We're looking at a score at 125 or above. So if you look back at phase one, we're looking at the scores that we have that all of our students take throughout the school year with their curriculum base, their standardized scores. And then we move to the COGAT screener to see if they score at that 125 or higher. Again, this is all on our website. I'm just trying to explain this so that everybody can understand how our phases work. After we get through phase one and the students have met this criteria, the COGAT score is at that score above 125, we have our school psychologist that will conduct a gifted evaluation. They will do a gifted written report. It's also known as a GWR. That is where the school psychologist will be testing for that full scale IQ of 130. Okay. If the students, we have had situations where students are scoring slightly below 130, a little bit right over 130. And we're looking at all of our, our matrix at that point. We also look at the achievement, the retention. Uh, we look at parent input regarding that um, determination for gifted. So sometimes we don't solely base it on the IQ score. Again, I can't make a candid statement that that's what we, we do. That is a team decision. That's where you would work with your classroom teacher when you're discussing how the child is overall doing, produ you know, producing their school readiness, maturity, how they are um, working in their MTSS score. So it's a conversation that continues to have. These phases that we have on our website were also evaluated by our school psychologist and our teacher of gifted. We looked at this over the summer to make sure that it was clear and concise um, so that parents and, and faculty can understand. Once we go through the evaluation, again, the gifted report will be written and shared with the parents at that point. So phase three would be determining services. So we get through our testing, we look at our teacher data, we take the COGAD, our school psychologists evaluate, and now it's phase three, it's time to determine services. So if the student um, meets the criteria, the team must meet together and see if they are in need of gifted services. And if you look on the second bullet here, I did put a statement in here, this, is, this was um, that, I, that I felt was very important. There are occasions when students who qualify as gifted OK, because of their scores, they have the 130 IQ, they have the 125 on the COGAT, but they're not in need of gifted services at that time. They're, the team does not feel that a GIEP at that point is ready, meaning that the enrichment that they're getting through the MTSS is sufficient to meet their current needs and abilities. 
I will give you an example. Um, some of our younger students um, that we have, um, you know, I would say first or second grade, they're qualifying based on their scores, but the team comes together and really truly feels that the child is not ready for that acceleration, those two, one to two grade levels above the coursework. And the reason for that is that we wanna make sure our students are ready developmentally, mature and with a mature mind to take on that acceleration. We wanna make sure that the students are interested and they have the stamina to do that. So we come together as a team and determine that. At any time, we can look, continue to look at the data like we do through MTSS, like you do through teacher conferences and see if, if and when that time is ready for that full acceleration um, to have that GIEP and to have those goals written to work on for a full year. So students will be considered for gifted services in reading. We, we again, we look at the Fontes and Penn out, like as I stated, the star scores. In terms of our math enrichment, um, once they get through phase one and phase two, we also look at, um, it's called the evidence of mastery assessment. And that is scoring, that is testing students above their math grade level to see if they can go beyond mastery of their grade level. So if they are in the third grade class, we're seeing if they can do fourth and fifth grade math. There are two parts to that test. There's, there's part one where we're asking for a score of 70% or higher, and then that would move them to part two, which would be, um, a, we would need an average of 90% between the two between the two math scores. And that is really important because that's really going to show our team that our that the child is ready for that that true acceleration in math. We know that math builds upon each other builds upon each other each year, especially as we get to the middle school and high school year to have that foundation. But to have that acceleration to be able to do the higher level critical thinking in math. Um, is, is where we would, we would want to determine those services. Um, again, we may, the students may take the evidence in mastery and the scores may not be as, as, as high as meeting to our criteria, but they're still getting those enrichment activities through our MTSS and through the classroom teacher, okay? If a student does not qualify for gifted students, we ask that we wait a full year to go back and start phase one, to give it a full year to determine um, the data and to see what type of growth has been made. Our K to 12 programming, so that we just went through how our students um, get evaluated. Our K to 12 program is an inclusive model. Um, once a student qualifies for, for a GIEP, we have a GIEP, a gifted IEP, gifted individualized education plan meeting. And that includes the parent, our classroom teacher and teacher of gifted. We can also have our, our school counselors there if, if, if needed, you can request that as well. But it's really critical to have, um, oh, and our school administrator, our principals, I'm sorry, I did not add that in there. They are also part of the meeting as well to develop the plan. We develop goals written based on the evaluation and the acceleration and enrichment that they need. We also develop specially designed instruction. Those are the accommodations that they need um, within their curriculum to access that, that higher level. As I stated, we do use an inclusive model for gifted services. Our elementary level, as I stated, our teacher of gifted are in the classrooms. They're in our MTSS groups um, and working with, with the, the teachers um, right there in the moment in the curriculum. Our gifted program is academic and aligned with our Radnor Township School District curriculum. As I stated, we evaluate our curriculum. We're on a cycle for different subjects and we make sure that we are um, providing the, the correct enrichment within our programming for our students. The progress of our goals are discussed at the annual GIEP meeting. So that's when you meet with your team and discuss the goals and the um, SDIs that, that are provided in the document. Our method of instruction. So um, I'm going to turn this over to Jackie and Jen in a minute, but our, to, to explain how it looks at the secondary level. So our method of instruction, again, we use an inclusion model. Um, the gifted teacher is responsible for proposing the appropriate goals um, based on, on the testing and, and the team's input. The general teacher and gifted teacher work together. They collaborate to look at the, the material um, and to write on the progress of the goals. Um, if the GIEP team determines that a student is in, is in need of acceleration, so in need of 
the, the goals and having that document, we look in the areas of English language arts and math. That's not to say we haven't had students with um, science acceleration um, because they maybe have a strong math score, but we, we typically look at the English language arts and, and the math um, to, to support our students. So I'd like to turn it over. Um, Jackie, would you like to speak about the middle school and how that works with um, our leveled courses? Absolutely, thank you, Kara. So in terms of the acceleration versus enrichment piece at the middle school, um, in sixth grade, you'll see that there are some students that take the accelerated language arts class. And then there will also be students who may be in an accelerated math course where they're, you know, above the grade level and it's a faster pace and things of that nature. And then moving into seventh and eighth grade, there is accelerated courses for in, uh, language arts, social studies and science. And those are all at the faster pace, you know, the students are there in that accelerated setting. And then with math, like I said, with the sixth grade as well, you know, the math progression is just in terms of accelerated, they're above that grade level and they're receiving the faster paced instruction. Uh, I think that's pretty much it in terms of um, the accelerated versus enrichment part right there. Jen, did you want to speak to anything in terms of the high school level? Sure. At the high school level, uh, we have multiple levels um, to explore for each and every child. We have classes from honors level all the way up to AP classes. Um, and we also have multiple electives that can help students with their enrichment focus. Um, we have electives in all different areas. So we also hit acceleration and enrichment in both areas. Great. Thank you. Okay, this next slide um, is in regards to our duly identified students. So we have students that also um, are identified under, I was talking about our chapters in, in Pennsylvania, chapter 14, which is our students that need special design instruction to access their education. These are students that have specific needs that need direct instruction in certain areas um, to be able to, like I said, ac access their, their day and their schedule. Um, we also have students that have that are gifted that they may have they may have you know needs in the in the area of social emotional but they are, they are also a gifted learner as well so I'm going to turn that over to Jen to talk about how that works and I can I can finish up about how that works with the paperwork too Jen sure well IEPs trump GIEPs in general so the social emotional and the academic um issues that are involved are always addressed first. Um, but I am always invited to the IEP meeting and I always have my own gifted goals, specially designed instruction and information for all teachers, parents, and administrators that are involved. So um, as a matter of fact, there's quite a few, more than you think that are dual identified and uh, we take care of them from both sides. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of collaboration with with all team members. Um, so if we have this, we have the special education teacher. That's that's the case manager. But then they're also collaborating with the with the gifted teacher to make sure that that part of of the document is is written and being followed. We also. Yeah, have I was going to. Sorry. Go ahead, Jen. I just wanted to say we had a similar. Uh, we have a similar situation with 504 plans. Um, Gifted teachers always work together well with the uh, school psychologists. We have copies of 504s. Um, we usually merge our meetings together and we're able to provide um, all kinds of options, including gifted components for students who need a 504 and have a gifted IEP. Great. Did you want to say something, Jackie? I, yeah, I was just going to say that the same is true for the middle school level as well. Everything that's Je that Jen's speaking to is absolutely the same, you know, in terms of the 504s and the IEPs mm -hmm. and the collaboration between all the teachers and the mm -hmm. team as it pertains to the middle school in addition to the same that she discussed from the high school. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll turn it over to middle school gifted and Jackie can explain a little bit more. I know you just did earlier, um, but how that how that works. Yes, so the team will the team will decide when the student is, you know, either coming into the middle school or if they are newly identified, the team will discuss um, the level of courses that will support either the enrichment or acceleration. Um, 
When they're transitioning from fifth to sixth, one thing I do like to point out is um, it looks a little bit different because like Kara mentioned in the elementary school, that get t the teacher gifted learning is a little bit more um, present as it pertains to like being in the classroom or maybe even, you know, having the students in their, you know, small group setting or something of that nature. Whereas in the middle school, you'll see that uh, the goals all pertain directly to the courses that the students are placed into and they're receiving their enrichment or acceleration directly through that course placement and that's how they'll continue through. So if you're a parent of a student that's currently in the elementary school and you're transitioning to the middle school, just be aware that, you know, when, you, when it comes time to have that meeting, you know, things may be looking a little different in terms of the goals that you see. And the reason for that is just because we are moving into that, you know, course placement idea of the enrichment and acceleration taking place there. And the students are assigned to a gifted case manager. So, you know, there's multiple staff members in the building. I am one of the um, gifted case managers. We have several others. So it could be a variety of people, not just myself. And then the goals, like I already mentioned there, are um, definitely adjusted to the middle school programming. And over the course of their middle school years, you know, we always like to say that things are, you know, the document's fluid, things can change based on their progress. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it with middle school. Did I miss anything, Kara? No, that's it. We, ha we have multiple case managers. I think you said that at, at the middle school. Um, we have teachers that we have, you know, we have a music teacher that also is a gifted te teacher of gifted and oversees our, our, the GIEPs and works with the team. We have a Spanish teacher. So it, it, it's very well-rounded. And I think that really helps um, for the teachers to have a different lens when they're bringing, you know, the ideas to the team. And then we have Radnor High School. <laughs> and that's me. Mm -hmm. um, so actually the transition from eighth to ninth grade is pretty smooth. Um, uh, the only thing we don't have is that team atmosphere. Um, so the bottom line is I can't really have multiple teachers within my gifted meetings, unfortunately. I can try to get as many as I can during a certain time of teachers who have availability um, during that you know, half hour time block that we meet, but most of the time I am able to get one or two teachers that are involved. Um, other than that, um, we do have an administrator present and we have the parents. We have three options. You can come into the building and have a meeting. You can have a meeting on Zoom um, or there's another uh, option where um, I, a lot of my seniors, if they feel at this point they don't need a meeting, sometimes the parents will get to me and say, listen, we're you know up in arms with college applications and acceptances. Let's just go over the paperwork together over the phone and all good. So um, we, we do that to it, you know, the senior level. Um, we also have quite a few gifted case managers. Um, I am only allowed to have 65 students on my caseload. And Radnor does have more than that at the high school level. So we do have other teachers that also provide gifted services for the students up there. It is also curricular. We do have the math, the writing, the reading. We do have science, but we also have other goals up at the high school. We have leadership goals. Uh, we have goals that they may want to do at um, an elective level, um, also clubs and um, sports related. Um, so we try to meet with the students, get to know them ask them the, what they think, what they want their goals to be. Then we get together with the parents and the teachers and we come up with documentation for the year. Great, thank you. Okay, so thank you. So there, this is um, just a slide about our updates and going forward. Um, we were really thankful that we were able to hire a district-wide department chair. That is that is Jen Howie. She, um, as she stated in her introduction, she has been a gifted educator for many years. Um, we were very fortunate to have her come to Radnor. Um, so it has been really important to help my office and to help our teachers to have a department chair K to 12. So she has been meeting with our elementary teachers. She has assisted um, so much at our middle school with with teachers with with I, with GIEP writing, um, you know, preparing for meetings, looking at course descriptions, and really assisting us um, at, at all levels. So we're very thankful for that. 
Um, we will continue to work with teaching and learning regarding our RTSD curriculum. I, I already discussed that, how we, we want to make sure that um, gifted is, is part of that discussion when we're looking at, at all, all levels of curriculum. We are going to continue with pro pro professional development for teacher training. We can utilize PATAN and our intermediate units. That is one goal that um, I really have for the department is to make sure that we are supporting this level um, for our teachers. And then again, um, you know, parent trainings. Um, if, if you have any parent trainings that or any topics that you um, are interested in regarding gifted education or supporting your child, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to, um, you know, direct you. We have a lot Lot of resources on our web page, um, just different resources that they have within the state of Pennsylvania um, working around gifted education. Um, I was recently at a conference um, last week and I was able to go to some sessions about what's going on in the state with gifted and it's, it's really interesting to see how different school districts are taking on different models but they are really trying to move to the inclusion model and I'm really glad that Radnor is leading the way um, I'm really glad that we have multiple case managers in our secondary level. I think that brings um, just a different um, lens to, to supporting our students um, in, in all areas. So um, we will continue to um, look at look at our programming and look to um, support you as a parent with the evaluation process. And um, we welcome your, your feedback and questions. As I stated earlier, we're not, we're not taking questions and answers tonight, but if you have specifics, please reach out to your building. And um, we thank you for participating tonight. Okay. Thank nice. you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.